just have to find the joy in surrender. Solo tienes que encontrar la dicha en la rendición. It's like you're suffering. Es como que estás padeciendo. And you have to go past that. Tienes que atravesar eso. You have to find joy in nature. Because it's natural. You know, sure you're sad. But don't suffer. You know, that's why the joy facet and the surrender are together. And you have to use those two. And find joy in the situation. Not this, oh, the mourning. Uh, she's still alive. So be in that space. Be in that energy. Hmm? Focus on that. Hmm? I know it's not easy. But you can do it. Question, Nisha. When you talk about the unconditional love, that is in our being. That em emerges. I will compare with the perfume of a rose and the softness of the flower. When I arrives to the whole, and I can feel I can love in freedom, in light and in darkness without judging. Can I feel really I'm starting to love myself? When you're completely free of the judgment externally, it's not that you're starting. You are completely loving yourself unconditionally. Because on responsibility I am that is because you've healed this. And you accept that completely. You love all that unconditionally. So you've completely healed. I'm in charge of a project related with environment. And I have a team. One of them, one of the members is always questioning my decisions. <coughs> and never miss the opportunity to say what I have to change or is wrong. We are in the middle of the project. I have been moving and expressing about it, trying to resolve the situation. But there is always something that she does that is like pinches me. Okay. The thing is, she's questioning your authority. And you have to be more open. Instead of seeing her as the enemy, or your mother telling you you're not doing things well, just open and listen to her. And all you have to do is really listen and say, I will take that into consideration. That's what bosses say. They don't go, oh, she's doing it again. She's making me feel bad. Okay? Because people are very insecure. And they want to show you that they're important. Because they feel very small. It's not that she's trying to put you down. She's trying to pull herself up. And you have to see her as someone that needs to feel important. And it's easy for you to give that to her. Because it's empowerment. And maybe if you open, sometimes she'll have good ideas. Or no. Oh, no. But first thought about the environment primer, primer punto del medio is the toxicity of human behavior. Okay, so we have to open Entonces, for everything. Because it's all one thing. We destroy the planet, we destroy each other, we don't have the capacity to love, we want control. We want to stick with our ideas. All of that 
is part of the environment. So you need to change. Okay, and use it to change. Because it's probably some old program, no? That you have. And you need to liberate that. And as a good boss, you're open. Now, if you're a guru, you don't have to listen to anyone. But you're not, you're the boss. And the interesting thing is, when you are a guru, you listen to everyone. I listen to my team. I have a very smart team. And often they have great ideas, better than my ideas. So I'm always open to listen. Okay, and remember that. Always open to receive. Yeah, don't make her the problem. Hmm? Yes. Yeah. I have a question. When a person is aggressive, how can I do to not get hooked in the emotion or not being submissive to that? You have to connect internally and see what it provokes. You don't have to move into action or respond in a certain way. You have to be vulnerable with yourself and see, how do I feel? Like if you were there screaming at me, I wouldn't feel anything because I've emptied that. Okay, and that's the point you have to get to. If it's affecting you or you feel suppressed, you have to heal that internally. Or you'll keep recreating it everywhere. Hmm? People that are insecure or come from that sort of an environment keep recreating it. And you have to just go in and heal it. You know, often women get into abusive relationships. I'm not talking about you. But they do. Because there's something familiar. And they keep doing the same thing. And then they decide to empower themselves. And I'm not going to do that again. And then the next partner is exactly the same. Why? Because they have to heal internally. It's a program. It doesn't mean you should tolerate it, but you need to heal it. And this is a mistake that humans make. They think, oh, I'm going to get rid of this, or oh, I'm going to leave this, or oh, I'm going to fire this. But really, we'll recreate it until it stops affecting us, unfortunately. Mm, it's like that. What is the love of the re of the partner relationship or romanticism? In comparison to what? What is for you? Okay, so what humans do? Love. This is what humans do. They are sexually attracted to someone, and then they project all their ideas on the perfect partner, and that's the perfect partner. This is the love of my life. This is what I've always wanted. This is my soulmate. They become completely blind and see exactly what they want to see. And then when the reality comes to the light, they start to get disillusioned and resented and they start to pull the romantic vision down. Okay, that's romantic love. It's great for six weeks. <laughs> then reality comes. And that's when the real love starts to evolve. 
That's where we start to grow. We start to become unconditional. We start to see reality instead of projecting our fantasy. So it's a great tool for growth. But that initial six weeks is an illusion, but a real illusion, no? It's fun, but it's very illusionary. What's important in relationships is vulnerability, growth, unconditionality, empowerment, support. These are what are important. This is how relationships flourish and grow. And they change. They don't stay the same. You know, that romantic love, you don't sustain that. You can have romantic aspects and intimacy, but that blindness that can't see anything of reality, that dissolves. Hmm? I'm sorry if I burst all your balloons. But I've tried it many times. And I've always come to the same conclusion. <laughs> Hi, Isha. Hola. First to tell, to tell everyone that yesterday with my partner, <gasps> we decided to do six months. Wow. <laughs> and with the children too, obviously. Wow, with the three girls. Wow, que hermoso. Wow. I'm r really flying above clouds, happy, thrilled. And then it comes the concern. Oh, here, there, the, the, the money, the work, the... I just want you to talk about that. How to survive? You have to trust. You have to let go. And you have to move into action. And trust you can create exactly what you need. You know, when something comes from your heart, the interesting thing is, what I always find, is when you're really clear and you're focused on consciousness, you create from places you can't even imagine. Because you don't have a no. You only have a yes. So don't doubt. Just move forward. And you've got five months, no? Five months or four months? Four months, five months, five months. Good. You can almost have a baby in that time. Ah. <laughs> Can you talk about about the separation from mum? My mum is so old. She got sick last year. I feel her the last moments. And I could love to just give with her embracing her. I felt that with her. You know, all you can do is just love her. Be there with her. Support her. And make sure everything's perfectly clean. Like there's no more judgments, no more resentments, no more anything, just complete unconditional love. And that's when she's ready to leave. So it should be a beautiful thing. Yeah. You have to make it something beautiful. Because it's inevitable, no? You know, it's like Annie's mum. She's very old. You know, and Annie just goes there and loves her, and whether she talks, doesn't talk, whether she recognizes or doesn't recognize, you know, just give to her. But from this place of letting go, don't hold on to her. Hmm? That's the important thing. They, they want to leave. You know, because often old people hold on because they think you can't let them go. And they're ready to go. Mm? It's natural. Yeah. 
in the witness, you go on listening the environmental sounds. And I would like you to talk more about that. How daily to take the attention out of our thoughts and take it to the sounds okay. around in nature yeah, yeah, can yeah. help. You know, the thing is, it's automatic. If you're in present moment awareness, you're conscious of everything. You know, often I'll be in a group, not even here, like anywhere. I say, oh, did you hear that? And people look at me like, what? Hear what? But I can hear everything because I'm here now. I'm very connected with what's happening. And that's a consequence of the expansion of consciousness, of present moment awareness, of being here. Because this is silent. And here, you're connected. So you have to just keep dropping down. You know, until it becomes your permanent experience. When you see this, just stop. Connect. The wind, the paper, the cough, my the feet, the chair. Now try a bit harder. The olas. Be present. And you have dog ear dog, dog ears. <laughs> really? You start to hear everything. Most people go through their lives not hearing anything. They don't even hear how heavily they're stepping, like elephants. They're not present. I want to ask you, ask you if you can talk a bit. The self boycott, or what, what happens when we are procrastinating in work, for example. Okay, so often humans do that because they're afraid of failure, because they're not trusting in themselves. So instead of taking a risk and moving forward and the risk of failure, which doesn't even exist, you have to do it from a place of more in excitement, no? Oh, I'm going to try and do this. And I'm going to give it my best shot. And I'm going to be excellent. And I'm going to discover a lot. If you do it with that energy, Instead of that fear of, oh, what if it doesn't work? What if I fail? Oh, maybe I'll do it another time. Maybe I'm not ready. Do you see the difference? One comes from joy and passion, and the other comes from fear and procrastination. And what do you think creates? A clear vision. If you're oscillating, if you oscillate from yes to no, the universe can't align with you. But if you're clear and you're precise and you're excellent, everything falls into place. Okay, so you have to make a decision and move. That's my favorite word, move. Movete. Aslo. Hi, Isha. Being here, I received the sixth facet, talking about the surrender. Since I receive it, the surrender word is showing up in every meeting, in every moment. Everywhere is showing up surrender. And I have contradictory feelings with that word in between acceptance and uh, non-action. Can you separate both concept on the surrender as acceptance or 
or, or that surrender can be a non-action, no? Because I see it negative. You know, it's not a non-action. No es una no acción. It's an internal action. Sino que es una acción interna. And it comes from joy. Que viene de la And that place is higher than any place. Es más que otro because you can't lose anything. The ego wants to attain. El ego it wants to win. Ganar. Wants to have control. control. And it gets it. Lo but it doesn't feel complete. No se and that's an illusion. Es la we associate surrender with defeat. And it's not. No it's the exact opposite. It's the wise man's greatest magic. Because what happens? When I make this more important, my consciousness, my beingness, my joy, when I make that more important than being right, I evolve. So it's always a higher choice. And I expand. And that is the biggest action, to surrender. Anyone can fight for something. The whole world does it. But can you surrender to a higher point? To your own joy, your own love, letting go of control. Can you do that? Much harder than winning. Much harder. Especially if you have a strong personality. Hmm? And I need to win. Spencer. <laughs> Expressing today, I reflected a lot the relationship with my mum. And I saw, I abandoned myself so much in several moments in my life. And I would like to know how to move forward. Because all I am under myself, I cannot change. And I would like you to talk how to move forward, how to continue. You know, the thing is, first you have to remove all this. Because it's habitual. <laughs> and you feel like a victim to it. And you just need to change it. If you're present in the moment, you can see when you're not speaking your truth. You can see when you're not being clear. And you have to change it in the moment. The minute you see it, you change. Because there's always a thought. Before we abandon ourselves, there's always a doubt. And the more consciousness we have, it's clearer and clearer. And that's all you can do. And sometimes you'll still abandon yourself. And then don't start doing this. Just say, oh, abandon myself again. Okay, I'm not doing it next time. Like, find joy in changing. That's all. Similar to something that somebody asked. The question is, if to be in the present moment that I related to the first facet that in the programs with Annie we are getting deeper, is the same thing as witness. The mastery of it, yes. <laughs> and telling you how how can I m go through? I have been having sparkles. That present moment doesn't have a form or doesn't have the form my intellect says, or I would like, or what I'm programmed for. And having these uh, sparkles, I felt like. Uh, 
I want you to talk about that and how to surrender more to the moment. Those chispasos are the truth. There's only this moment. It's like romantic love. We project our program onto the moment. And when we become empty, we start to just experience reality. And it's full of love, no? It's full of perfection. Because there's no thought attached. It just is. The judgments have gone. And it's just a consequence of the expansion of consciousness. And that's what's happening. You're starting to see reality. Good. About frustration and intolerance. Uh, intolerance. Real like intolerance, like... <laughs> Oh. <laughs> like that. Así? Yeah, yeah. All you can do is move it. Lo único que hacer es mover eso que okay, when that's provoked, es detonada, algo te la provoca, you need to remove yourself, get a pillow or a mattress or something and just move, 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 move. Because nothing can be permitted to affect you like that. Okay, so it's just a matter of moving all that stress. You're like a bubbling pot, no? Yeah, but you don't just lift the lid. You have to take the whole thing off and then empty it. Okay, so you need to just go full on until it's all gone. And I'm sure it's certain subjects that trigger too. Or certain people. Oh, temas. Yeah, well, whatever. Same thing, it's a program. It's a program. Yeah, but good. Just keep moving it. These two days I had unifications in the morning, having like uh, conscious dreams. And I feel a lot of fear in those dreams. And when I wake up, I feel like resistance to unify again because I don't want to feel it again, the fear. And today I was able Will to control Will you stop trying them? to control? <laughs> if you're having conscious dreams that are full of fear, <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> you're moving stress. <laughs> Why are you making it into <laughs> something big? <laughs> you're too big for that. <laughs> you just need to move it. <laughs> oh, I tried to control it. You have to go and move it. Yeah, because you're out of your body. In this moment. Because you're trying to avoid what you need to move. Uh, take more responsibility. Go up the stairs. Go and see Uma. Oh, Uma. Where's Uma? See there she is. Go and visit Uma, move your stress, and then go back and unify. Yeah? Great. Gracias. <laughs>